Welcome to an introduction to psychological safety. Every single person in a team could be hardworking, highly motivated, highly skilled geniuses and still be a failure as a team. It's only if these people can work together can a team truly perform. And how teams treat each other and how managers treat the individuals within their teams matters. My name is Stephen Lamb. I'm a business psychologist and coach. And today we're going to look at four areas around psychological safety. It's a huge subject, but we're going to focus on, first off, what is psychological safety? We'll also touch on some misconceptions around it and why psychological safety matters. And we'll finish by looking briefly at how can I measure, how can I assess it? One of the pioneers of psychological safety is Dr. Amy Edmondson. She's a professor of psychology at Harvard Business School and author of the book, The Fearless Organization. She defined psychological safety as a shared belief that one won't be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas, concerns or questions in a group or at work. Psychological safety is a shared belief that the team is safe for interpersonal risk taking. It exists when you're not afraid to take risks, ask questions, raise concerns, raise problems, give feedback, disagree, make mistakes. And, and if we do, that we won't get hammered for it. It's kind of like a permission for candor and honesty. I can give feedback, openly admit mistakes, and we'll learn from each other. This describes a climate characterised by interpersonal trust and mutual respect, where people are comfortable being themselves whilst respecting a code of conduct. In essence, you feel safe to be yourself and voice your opinions in your team and hopefully you can bring your best self to work. Dr. Timothy Clark, author of the book, The Four Stages of Psychological Safety, describes psychological safety as a condition where you feel included, safe to learn, safe to contribute, and safe to challenge the status quo without fear of being embarrassed or marginalized or punished in some way. For Dr. Clark, psychological safety assesses what happens between people. For him, psychological safety is a condition you feel. It's there or it's not. It's about the relationships between people in a group and the trust that's there. In more detail, the four stages of psychological safety are as follows. Inclusion safety satisfies the basic need to connect and to belong. You feel part of the team. You feel included. People call you by your name. Uh, you feel safe. You're on the email lists. Your perspectives are listened to and paid attention to. You're recognised and valued and accepted for who you are and what you bring. This includes your unique attributes and your defining characteristics. You are entitled to inclusion. Your worth precedes your worthiness. You don't have to pass some secret test or prove yourself to the team or to the manager. Your place is owed to you. Once I feel included, then I can begin to learn and grow. And here's where we get to learner safety. I feel safe to engage in the learning process, to ask questions, to engage, to make mistakes, to give and receive feedback and to experiment and try new things. You get encouragement and support to learn in exchange for you putting the effort in to learn. And as a leader, you go first. You hold that person big even if they don't hold themselves big. You can see what they're capable of even if they can't yet see that within themselves. You see their potential. You provide hope and you remove fear. And in doing so, give them the space to learn and grow and improve. Now I'm able to really begin to contribute to this team. I feel confident to use my skills and abilities to make a difference, a meaningful contribution. The social exchange here is I get autonomy in exchange for results. And I'm not entitled to this. I earn it. Kind of like kids in, 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 at home. 
you start with small jobs and when they show that they can do that they get bigger jobs and bigger jobs and bigger jobs until hopefully they become fully contributing members of the family and then we go on to the fourth stage challenger safety and this satisfies the basic need to make things better i belong to this group i'm learning and growing my performance is making a demonstrable difference and now i feel safe to speak up and challenge the status quo when I think I can see a way to improve things and make things better. The social exchange here is I get air cover from my boss in, a, in exchange for my honesty and my candor. If you want people to be creative, give them real, sustained air cover so that they can be brave enough to take what is almost always a substantial risk when challenging the status quo. Psychological safety means it is not expensive to be yourself socially, economically, politically, emotionally. There isn't a price to pay for candor, for honesty, for openness. Vulnerability is at the heart of all this. Team members are trying to figure out, will vulnerability be rewarded or punished here in this team with this manager? What's the pattern? Here are some examples of vulnerability in a team setting or with a boss. Speaking up, challenging them, asking a question that you're fearful might sound stupid, giving feedback to someone, calling out a bad idea or a concept, challenging your boss or an established team member, discussing an injustice you've seen within the team, guarding healthy boundaries, or simply being yourself and not having to hide who you are so that you are accepted within the team. We're trying to figure these out. If these acts of vulnerability are rewarded, we have psychological safety in the team. And if they're not, we don't. But of course, it's a matter of degree. So we watch, we observe, we take our time. We see people engage in acts of vulnerability and we just look to see what happens to them. Oh, Fred spoke up and he got hammered for it. Shiny told her boss he was railroading the team and got praised for it and, and the boss started acting differently. Amir raised a concern and got pulled off the project faster than you could blink. Is vulnerability rewarded or punished? Based on this we have another definition. Psychological safety is an environment of rewarded vulnerability. If it's punished, we start editing or censoring our behaviour and move into a more defensive mode of performance. We're covering our backs. We become preoccupied with personal risk management. Fear-stricken employees might give you their hands and some of their head, but none of their heart. Now, this doesn't mean that there should be loads of psychological safety and no accountability. People need to be held to high standards in a team. There's a balance between psychological safety and motivation and accountability. We need both. We're not asking people to dial it back on performance standards. When a leader isn't supportive, consultative or challenging, the team tend to become disengaged and apathetic. People stay, but they've essentially quit. It's called the apathy zone and we obviously don't want that. Next, we've got the comfort zone. Loads of psychological safety, but not enough challenge. The problem here is that people tend to feel safe, but generally end up lacking ambition where the team learns to have little ambition for itself. It might be lovely, but there's no performance. Then we have the bottom right-hand corner, where managers really push, challenge, but have incredibly low levels of psychological safety for the team. Standards are high and clear, but people tend to feel terrified about speaking up. This zone really hits collaboration and damages it. People feel scared or unwilling to ask for help because of what that might admit. And whilst they might feel challenged by their work, they don't feel supported or enabled to do it well. It's all about the learning and performance zone, where standards are high and psychological safety is high. The leader is supportive, consultative and challenges the team. People feel energised by their work. They're able to get it done, to take risks, to speak up when they see potential challenges on the horizon. Team members ask for help from one another and offer it in return and they're able to get their work done. Psychological safety is not about being nice, warm and fuzzy because niceness doesn't deal with key issues. It's about being direct but also being caring. 
W. Edwards Deming said that a leader's job is to drive out fear because the only thing that fear motivates is hiding. So it's not niceness. Niceness doesn't deal with the issues. It's not fear. It's not about giving everybody a participation trophy, about a guarantee being in place that all ideas are going to be applauded because clearly they can't be. It's also not about creating an environment free from conflict because productive conflict and intellectual friction reveals new thoughts and new ideas. Good conflict, good friction is needed. It's not a route to overshare or challenge the goals every single time. That could end up exhausting everybody. And it's not about giving people permission to, to slack off. Everyone is accountable within a psychologically safe environment. It's not job security. We don't have jobs for life. Communication improves when teams feel psychologically safe. We get more updates, better debates and more information on the table. This in turn leads to improved collaboration with more perspectives coming in, the space to talk things through and share ideas and discuss them and build upon opportunities, which in turn leads to improved creativity, more ideas, improved problem solving, and a better chance to take advantage of opportunities that come the team's way. In knowledge economies, this can be the difference between okay and absolutely nailing it. Psychological safety leads to dramatically improved organizational performance. Really? Well, prove it then. What is the return on investment for psychological safety? Okay, let's have a look. What's the return on investment? Dr. Edmondson's research found that teams with higher levels of psychological safety were more able and willing to discuss mistakes and look for ways to limit them. She also found that it led to improvements in infection control within hospital environments. Google's research program, Project Aristotle, where they tried to identify the difference that makes a difference in their highest performing teams, found that psychological safety was far and away their number one predictor of best performance. Who was on the team, their qualifications, their intelligence levels mattered less than how well the members of those teams interacted with one another. Gallup, the survey organization in 2017, found that improvements in psychological safety would lead to reductions in turnover, improvements in productivity, and 40% and fewer safety incidents. PricewaterhouseCoopers in 2014 kind of agreed, saying that it also led to a one-third drop in presenteeism and similarly one-third drop in compensation claims. They noted that improvements in psychological safety paid back £2.40 for every £1 invested on each single improvement. Finally, schools with higher levels of psychological safety see fewer incidents of violence. And biotech companies have said that higher levels of psychological safety have helped them to recruit and retain more diverse thinking staff. The Challenger Space Shuttle and Chernobyl nuclear plant disasters both happened in 1986 and were in part due to low levels of psychological safety. Project managers and engineers in both situations knew there were problems in advance, but chose not to speak up for fear of what would happen to them. Culture is based on fear, towing the line and punishment for slowing down projects cause well-meaning people to not speak up and avert a disaster. In 2015, Volkswagen cars were found guilty of trying to defraud green emission tests in the United States. Volkswagen initially tried to blame it on rogue staff, but it became clear that the CEO, who had a belief that fear worked, that fear motivated, and who tried to get people to do things by saying, I know your names, I know where you, I know where you live, I'll sack you. It's almost as if, if I terrify you enough, you'll come up with a genius invention. Low psychological safety affects everybody who breathes in that culture. You don't hit the rocks, but you also don't get the idea that could have changed the world. In psychologically safe environments, everything can be discussed. There are no undiscussables. 
in psychologically unsafe environments. If people can't speak up about the little stuff, they likely won't speak up about the big. That's why the Toyota production facility is designed almost entirely on the premise that things will go wrong, mistakes will happen. And if we catch them early enough, we'll end up making some of the best cars and having the best products on the planet. And they encourage team members to share issues and share problems so that we can solve them together. How do you assess psychological safety? I'll put a link to the questionnaire in the notes, but what we'll just do now is go through the questions that were asked in Amy Edmondson's research. The rating scale is from one to five, one strongly disagree, all the way through to five strongly agree. Jot down your answer to each of the next seven questions and at the end, add up all your scores. Answer your questions in relation to your current team. So the first one is, if I make a mistake on this team, it is never held against me. Next, all members in this team feel able to bring up problems and tough issues. People on this team never reject others for being different and nobody is left out. It is safe for me to take a risk in this team. It is easy for me to ask other members of this team for help. No one on this team would act in a way that deliberately undermines my efforts. And lastly, my unique skills and talents are valued and utilised on this team. Pause the video now and add your scores. If your scores are less than 17, then your team is psychologically unsafe. If they're between 18 and 27, then you've got low levels of psychological safety, but there are things you could do to improve it. And if they're above 28, your team has got high levels of psychological safety. Personally, I think it's better to use each one of those questions as a jumping off point for a conversation or a discussion within your team to just see where are we at, how are we doing, what could we improve on, what do we want to maintain? But that's a simple and powerful questionnaire. I hope you find it useful. I was wondering if I felt psychologically safe enough to tell this story and I've decided to take a risk and talk it through. And hopefully it will make sense. Popper's paradox, which states that if a society is tolerant without limit, then its ability to be tolerant will eventually be seized and destroyed by the intolerant. This story is one that I came across on Reddit uh, a number of years ago, and it's called the Nazi bar story. Michael Tager was having an after work drink at what can best be described as a reasonably rough bar. And a chap came and sat down to the side of him. He didn't see who it was, but he heard the bartender immediately say, no, get out. The newcomer said, hey, I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm a, paying, I'm a paying customer. I'm only here for a drink, mate. The bartender looked him in the eye, placed his hand underneath the counter, said, get out now. And the guy got up and left and Michael said to the bartender what, what was that all about the bartender replied you didn't see his vest it was covered in all kinds of Nazi stuff and iron crosses and swastikas you have to nip it in the bud because he could be really nice so you serve him and you allow him to come because you don't want to make a scene and he becomes a regular and he brings a friend and the friend could be really nice and then they bring their friends and their friends bring friends and pretty soon you realise, hang on, I'm running a Nazi bar because everyone else has left. And it's already too late because they're entrenched. So what Papa was essentially saying was to foster and maintain psychological safety, we must be intolerant of behaviours that damage and harm it. Don't allow in-groups or out-groups. Foster conversation, involve everyone and don't allow a culture of fear or bullying to take hold. We have to be intolerant of the behaviours that damage and harm psychological safety. Defend behaviours and attitudes that make your place, your team, a great place to be, an incredibly productive place to work in and a productive team to be a member of. It takes work from everyone, but you'll love it. Take care, everyone, and thank you.